Hello there! If you have missed the introduction, I'm Natalia. I like reading and in this videos I'm going to speak about great books. So let's get started. His surname can be considered as a title when speaking about horror, suspense and supernatural fiction. Quite easy to guess that I'm going to talk about Stephen King. An interesting fact that the surname King was taken up by Stephen's father, whose actual surname was Pollock. Names are important when concerning King, as he has several pen names. Richard Beckman, his most famous nom de plume, was taken in order to publish more books, as then there was a limit, one book per year by one author. Richard Beckman also appears in King's books as a character and plays a great part in the writer's real life. When the books were published under the pseudonym, one could see a picture of Richard Buckman as their author. By the way, the actual subject of the photo is Richard Manuel, who was King's literary agent. There are two more pen names, John Sweden and Beryl Evans. However, they do not have such history as Richard Beckman. Anyway, King's unique writing style could never let him remain unrecognizable and keep several names. Speaking about King's books, one can name three or four without wrecking one's brains. Carrie, The Shining, Rage, The Running Man, It, Pet Cemetery for starters. Each of these books deserves an individual video. However, today I'm going to talk about the book, or better to say, the series of books that clearly stand out from King's prose. Undoubtedly, it is The Dark Tower. The Dark Tower series begins with The Gunslinger, published in 1982, then follows The Drawing of the Three, 1987, the third book, The Wastelands, 1991, the fourth book, Wizard and Glass, 1997, then there is a break, till next book was published in 2003, however, The Little Sisters of Illyria appeared in 1998, and this story is a prequel to the series as it takes us into the gunslinger's youth. So, in 2003 there was Wolves of the Color. In 2004 we published the sixth book, Son of Susanna, and the final, seventh book, The Dark Tower. However, it wasn't the end, as in 2012 The Wind Through the Keyhole was released, relating to the events between the fourth and the fifth books of the series. In total, the Dark Tower consists of eight books and over 4,300 pages. And now, one of the most intriguing questions – why should you read it? Well, these books are not as scary as one can anticipate. However, they possess strong philosophy, so one will not be scared but perplexed. For instance, the train theme makes the reader reread some passages twice at least. The suicidal trains Patricia and Blaine the Mono, the crazy Charlie the Choo Choo are as solid characters as, for example, the main hero's parents. The Dark Tower series is undoubtedly Stephen King's magnum opus. Besides, King has said so himself. And what's more, there is a movie starring Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey. Although I advise to read the book first, as the movie is good, but personally for me it stands separately from the book. For instance, not like Harry Potter movies and books. Speaking of which, there are certain references in Wolves of the Color, where the wolves are called snitches. Familiar, isn't it? Well, back to the plot. The story centers around Roland de Chain, who is the last gunslinger of the Arthur Eld line. And yes, there is a reference to the Knights of King Arthur. However, Roland is an American version of it, who has a gun instead of a sword. As you may be well aware of ever-going debates on the matter of weapons bearing in the USA, giving the main character a gun, King has made him a rightful American knight. Also, Roland is handsome, Hollywood handsome, a well-known actor, Clint Eastwood, set for this novel character. But being handsome is not enough, as King also gave a noble character to Roland. His communication strategies, on the other hand, lack verbal paratechnics. Roland is a professional gunslinger, shooter, hunter, 
Accordingly, his professional communication strategies are perceptual analytical, aimed dead on target. He doesn't intersperse flowers of speech in his discourse. He is an example of laconic man philosophy. Throughout the eight books, the hero helps people, saves people, punishes villains, and more importantly, pursues the man in black. The first book starts with the line, the man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. This simple line is the most catching beginning of a book I have ever encountered. It almost gives you the whole plot, and still you want to read the rest of this epic adventure. So, why does the gunslinger follow the man in black? Why does he want to find this infamous dark tower? The world described in the book has literally moved on, and now is coming apart ensuring an impending death to everything. The tower is the axis and the cornerstone of Rowan's world, and all the trouble in it. I recommend you this masterpiece as this prose of high quality. It allows you to immerse yourself there without fear of suffocating from boredom. One of the most fascinating things in The Dark Tower, besides its first line, is the language created by King, the high speech. For example, Funky sigh. Thank you, sir, ma'am. Also, there is a new term, ka, which is an equivalent of fate. Ka tet is a group of people bound together by fate. I really appreciate when an author goes such lengths as creating a language, a map, or new species when describing the world of his book universe. Those details make it look authentic and original. So, all roads lead to the Dark Tower. Hope you've got interested in reading it. For my next video, there is a chosen book, and I have a riddle for you. The first one to guess it right will get a set of stickers in Vkontakte. Here goes the riddle. In the end of the day, even the stoic titans fade away. By the way, I am in great need of your honest opinion on the video. Please, write your comments or ideas. Give it a like if you did like it. Keep calm and read a good book.